Welcome to another edition of Bear Down with Brian Jeffries. That would be me. And the lady next door is Laura Ionello. She is the head women's golf coach at the University of Arizona, coming off another fantastic season and uh, a season that was unfortunately, like all sports, interrupted. And uh, they will be looking forward to getting back together in the fall. Laura, I want to thank you for joining us. And first of all, I uh, always like to check in, make sure you and your staff and your players are, are well right now and your family as well. Yes, thank you, Brian, for having me. This is a, a treat uh, to get to talk about our Arizona women's golf program. Uh, Justin Bubzer, my staff, and um, the ladies, they're, they're, they're hanging in there. You know, of course, the devastating end to our season, but uh, everybody seems to be in, in okay spirits. All right. Well, uh, needless to say, I mean, you've won a national championship as a player and as a coach, and the program is amongst the best in the country right now. And when things stopped, where was your team just in terms of momentum uh, here in, in the 2020 season? Well, really, we had just came off a victory uh, winning our Arizona Wildcat Invitational here in Tucson uh, with a record low. I believe we shot 19 under. Uh, we had five ladies finish in the, the top, you know, top seven. It was a fantastic finish. Uh, leading right into spring break. Um, the ladies were excited to have a couple days off um, before we left for our next event, which, which is going to be the Arizona State University Tournament. So um, it was really a shock, I think, a, a quick abrupt end that we really didn't see coming. I think it was, it was quite a shock to all of us. Okay. Uh, obviously, school's going on online for the, the students that uh, partake in that, and finals are coming up and everything. But what about golf? Uh, there are golf courses of all the sports, golf courses are open. And so you can go out and play. My son was out the other day. Uh, so have your players been able to take advantage of that? So we have players all over the world. Um, I have a couple freshmen, one from the United Kingdom. I've got another one from Lithuania. Most of Europe is closed. Um, I think it should be reopening here in the next week or two. Uh, California was not allowing. I've got a lot of players from California. So, um, and I've got three ladies from Taiwan where Taiwan golf was um, still avail available. So I have half the team that has been restricted and can't practice and play where I've got the other half can. Um, none of my ladies stayed here in Tucson, which, you know, you, we can still golf here, which has been nice. Okay, I want to go back a couple of years, and I know you never get tired of reliving that uh, 2018 national championship for your team. What did, I mean, the program was already in great shape, but what did that victory do for the Arizona women's program as a whole? You know, it, it really put us back on the map. We were consistently always in the top 10 every year, but I think when you win a national championship, it, it immediately validates everything that you're doing and everything in a department that whatever it is, you're, it's, it's developing these players, uh, the coaching staff, the team members, the facilities that we have, the beautiful sunny weather in Tucson. I think winning that championship, we've, we've always been good. We've never been bad at women's golf. I can never say we've had a bad year. We've been consistently good, but Winning a national championship just puts the cherry on top and says, hey, you can get better here. And I think that's the sell to recruits with the amount of sunshine that we have here. Absolutely. Well, you mentioned you have a number of international players. Uh, were all of them able to get home safely because of the, the travel restrictions? They were able to fly home safely. Um, had, I think most of the ladies had a lot of anxiety uh, before they got onto a plane, but they took the um, necessary precautions, you know, face masks, gloves, uh, hand sanitizer, wipes, you name it. They did everything they could to be safe. And then when the ladies returned home to Lithuania and Taiwan and, and everywhere, they were quarantined immediately for two weeks where even in Taiwan, I know the ladies on my team said that they were not allowed to leave their home or the police would, would come after them. So some very, very high security restrictions. You have some seniors on your team, and of course the opportunity has been presented for them to return if they choose. Where is the, the decision making right now in terms of that? We will not be having a senior return. Uh, she's gonna be graduating this summer and, and begin her new life as a professional. Okay. 
Well, speaking of a professional, you've had some ladies, obviously, that have advanced on to the LPGA Tour and other professional women's tours, and all of that has come to a, a stop as well. Would you be in favor of the LPGA resuming if it is safe sometime this summer? I, I really hope the LPGA, the PGA Tour, and amateur golf resumes. Uh, I think golf is one of the sports that we are able to social distance. You know, there is things of touching rakes and, and whole locate, you know, the pins and things of that matter. But I really truly feel like we can monitor golf. And so I think, you know, even if the PGA Tour or the LPGA Tour can get back running without spectators to help the social distancing, I, I definitely, I, I hope it, it happens soon. Okay. Well, you've never seen me play golf, Laura, but I've been practicing social distancing my entire life because I rarely keep the ball on the fairway, so I'm always chasing it around there somewhere. Yeah. Hey, you when, you when should, the, <laughs> you when, should when play with my golf? husband. Okay, all right. Yeah, we'd probably make a good twosome. <laughs> hey, uh, okay. when, when did the golf bug first hit you? And Because, of course, you had a great career at Arizona, but that it started, your golf career started before that. Yeah, for myself, personally, I had a dad that was a golf nut coming from Illinois. Our opportunity to play all year round is not there. So, you know, the four or five months that we can play, my dad was a was a five day a week golf kind of guy and after work and I had a younger brother. So when I was about the age of six, uh, dad would take us out to my father would take us out to a little practice hole. My brother and I would hit 100 yard shots and eventually started lessons and, and starting little junior tournaments. But I, I was a daddy's girl. I looked up to my father and I wanted to do everything he, he did. So uh, he really got me into it. When, uh, when did the University of Arizona first come onto the horizon in terms of your, your collegiate career? It was the summer before my senior year in high school. It was actually Coach Rick LaRose who recruited me heavily and Todd McCorkle. I think they saw me out at a tournament in California for the American Junior Golf Association. And I was willing to go far from home. I wanted warm weather and I wanted to play all year round because I aspired to be a professional. So I started making contacts with Coach LaRose, uh, with Todd, uh, came for a visit in January. I left six, six inches of snow in Illinois. It was 70 degrees and sunny in Tucson, and I was sold. <laughs> That'll do it. That'll do it every time. Yeah. So you, you, you've talked about the number of international players you have on your roster, and that's nothing new. Uh, tell us about recruiting. What do you look for? in a, a young female golfer that, that draws your interest to bring her to Arizona? Um, good question, Brian. I think my, my number one thing that I truly look for is good fundamentals. Uh, if it be grip, posture, stance, swing, uh, it's really good to have good fundamentals early as well as I love a, a strong young woman who has a lot of speed. Uh, speed is something that can be taught in time but some people have are gifted just like a major league baseball pitcher can throw a fastball not everybody can do that so speed in the the game of women's golf is huge uh you know i i do love my american girls i would say my team's about 50 50 i have a, a great tucson girl coming to our team this year maya bonita who i'm really excited about but recruiting is 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 tough it's super competitive because i have to keep up with my other pac-12 schools asu ucla and you know, they're getting the best players in the world, not just the United States. And so really, I, I go after the best of the best. And I look at tournament results. Golf is very black and white. We can see scores. I can see who shoots consistent numbers in the 60s compared to those who shoot consistent scores in the high 70s. So it, it's easier in that regard. We can just look at scores. But just fundamentals of short game, good putting mecha uh, mechanics, little things like that go a long way. Because you've had the Arizona program at such a high profile for so long, on average, how much, how many girls contact you first? In other words, they might send you a, a, a tape or a link to, to see them play, and maybe you, you hadn't made contact yet. Just on a, maybe a monthly basis, how many do you hear from? Oh, Whew. Uh, high school girls I hear from, I'm going to say probably about 100 or more a week. 
Uh, but to be honest with you, with all the new NCAA rules, we're not able to contact these young women till June 15th before their junior year in high school now, which has made it a lot more difficult. So uh, to be honest, the best of the best in the world, they're not contacting us. We are contacting them. Okay. Got it. Mm -hmm. So over the summer now, uh, if you're not able to travel to recruit, and, and it appears that that's probably a case for all sports right now, but what we're doing right here is now the form uh, of communication. How busy are you and your staff now? Once the, the time comes that you can t uh, contact players, is that going to be a, a pretty busy time for you all? It, it will. The one missing element is we really like to take um, our summers are really our evaluation times to figure out who we do like mechanically and technically. We like to see them out on the golf course. I like to see their mannerisms. I like to see how they treat others on the golf course, how they treat their parents. Uh, that's the that's the element we're going to be missing this summer. But as for the the phone calls, the Zoom, the FaceTime, that's not, that's not going to be anything new because that's most of our form of communication is through the FaceTime phone calls um, from our players, recruits in Asia to our players in Europe. It's, I mean, it's come June 15th, we're going to be very busy. That's for sure. Well, you, you brought, a, brought up a great point there and, and I'm not around your team, uh, but I do see enough of them around McHale Center that I do sense there is a great chemistry there. Uh, how important is culture? And I think you alluded to that in building a golf team. You know, it's, it's, it's very, it's very important to, to set, set boundaries for the ladies, set the, set the tone for the culture, set everything that you want as a coach that you want to see. And you need me to make sure you verbalize what you want to see out of these young women. Uh, it's, it's difficult because you have a, a team of maybe, you know, 10 young women fighting for five spots. So it's highly competitive and, I'm not naive to say that I expect everyone to get along and be best friends because that's not the way people work, especially women uh, that are in a competitive environment. But, but it is very, very important to me. Some of the, the rules, some of the biggest rules that I have for my team is that if you cannot be one, polite to one another, and if two, you cannot be a kind human being, you are not a good fit for my golf team because those are simple things that are going to carry you through life. If it's working with colleagues, if it's talking to your parents or just anyone, there's no excuse to not be polite. So that is something I, I really try to instill in these young women that they need to have manners and you don't have to like everybody, but you will not be rude. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, uh, this time of the year, normally you're either in the office or on the golf course. You've got a couple young ones at home. How have they adjusted to seeing mom every day? I, th I think they think we're on vacation, an extended <laughs> vacation. Um, besides the, the schoolwork that mom is having to drill through them every day. Luckily, Natalie just turned six. She's in kindergarten and Joanna is four. She's only in pre-K. So it's not, you know, algebra or anything that I'm having to do, but it's <laughs> it's it's been nice I've never spent this much time with my children it's you know yesterday would have been NCAA selection Wednesday for us of where we would have found out where we would have been going for NCAAs and I, I do miss my team and I miss everything about practice every day and, and competing but as a coach I look at this time that we will never have this time again most likely with our our family so I'm just trying to enjoy every minute of being mom and wife and cooking more, cleaning more, uh, doing more uh, domestic things, I guess you could say, but it's, it's, it's been good, but it's been hard. It's really, really been hard, especially talking to my players every week. And you, you see the sadness on their face. You, you hear the sadness in their voices because the most important thing in their life lives has been taken from them. So just trying to continue to encourage them that we will be back and things will be back to normal eventually when, when we get this virus out of here and, and find a vaccination, so. Well, Laura, uh, congratulations. Uh, I could say that every year because every year has been uh, special for your team. And I know uh, this would have been too, it was already off to a, an outstanding start. And we look forward to everybody getting back together again very soon. Yes, thank you, Brian. I, I look forward to seeing you in the hallways at McHale as well. Okay. 
Laura Ionello, our guest. She is the head women's golf coach at the U of A. That's Bear Down with Brian Jeffries for this week, and we'll see you again next time.